Let me tell you a story, a parable. There was once a man who wanted something very much. It seemed more important to him than anything else in his life. In order to have uh, what he desired, he incurred a great debt. He had been warned about going into that much debt, and particularly about his creditor, but it seemed so important for him to do what he wanted to do and to have what he wanted right now. So he signed a contract. He would pay it off sometime. He didn't worry about it too much, for the due date seemed such a long time away. He had what he wanted now, and that's what seemed important. The creditor was always somewhere in the back of his mind, and he made token payments now and again, thinking somehow that the day of reckoning never would really come. But, as it always does, the day came, the contract fell due, the debt had not been paid, and his creditor appeared and demanded payment in full. Only then did he realize that his creditor not only had the power to repossess all that he owned, but power to cast him into prison as well. I cannot pay you, for I have not the power to do so, he confessed. Then, said the creditor, we will exercise the contract, take your possessions, and you shall go to prison. You agreed to that. It was your choice. You signed the contract. Now it must be enforced. Can you not extend the time or forgive the debt the debtor begged? Arrange somehow for me to keep what I have and not go to prison. Surely you believe in mercy. Will you not show me mercy? The creditor replied, Mercy is always so one-sided. It would serve only you. If I show mercy to you, it will leave me unpaid. It is justice I demand. Do you believe in justice? I believed in justice when I signed the contract, the debtor said. It was on my side then, for I thought it would protect me. I did not need mercy then, nor think I ever should need it. Justice, I thought, would serve both of us equally as well. It is justice demands that you pay the contract or suffer the penalty, the creditor replied. That is the law. You have agreed to it, and that is the way it must be. Mercy cannot rob justice. There they were, one meeting out justice, the other pleading for mercy. Neither could prevail except at the expense of the other. If you do not forgive the debt, there will be no mercy, the debtor pleaded. If I do, there will be no justice, was the reply. Both laws, it seemed, could not be served. They are two eternal ideals that appear to contradict one another. Is there no way for justice to be fully served and mercy also? There is a way. The law of justice can be fully satisfied, and mercy can be fully extended, but it takes someone else, and so it happened this time. The debtor had a friend. He came to help. He knew the debtor well, knew him to be short-sighted. He thought him foolish to have gotten himself into such a predicament. Nevertheless, he wanted to help him because he loved him. He stepped between them, faced the creditor, and made this offer. I will pay the debt if you will free the debtor from his contract so that he may keep his possessions and not go to prison. As the creditor was pondering the offer, the mediator added, You demanded justice, though he cannot pay you, I will do so. You will have been justly dealt with and can ask for no more. It would not be just. And so the creditor agreed. The mediator turned then to the debtor. If I pay your debt, will you accept me as your creditor? Oh, yes, yes, cried the debtor. You save me from prison and show mercy to me. Then said the benefactor, you will pay the debt to me and I will set the terms. It will not be easy but it will be possible. I will provide a way. You need not go to prison. 
And so it was that the creditor was paid in full and had been justly dealt with. No contract had been broken. The debtor, in turn, had been extended mercy. Both laws stood fulfilled. Because there was a mediator, justice had claimed its full share, and mercy was fully satisfied. Each of us lives on kind of a spiritual credit. One day the account will be closed, a settlement demanded. However casually we may view it now, when that day comes and the foreclosure is imminent, we will look around in restless agony for someone, anyone, to help us. And by eternal law, mercy cannot be extended, save there be one who is both willing and able to assume our debt and pay the price and arrange the terms for our redemption. Unless there is a mediator, unless we have a friend, the full weight of justice, untempered, unsympathetic, must, positively must, fall on us. Full recompense for every transgression, however minor, however deep, will be exacted from us to the uttermost farthing. But know this, truth, glorious truth, proclaims that there is such a mediator. For, as the prophet said, there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Jesus Christ.